Hey, Foot Clan, we have a special message from NHTSA before we start today's show. If you're ever stopped at a railway crossing and the signals are flashing and you don't see the train or it appears to be moving slow and you think you can sneak across those tracks, please think about this. Even if the engineer sees you, they can't stop right away. It takes over a mile to stop, and by that time, it's too late and the resulting crash will be deadly. Remember, stop. Trains can't. This is Hall of Fame of Marshall Falk, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, yeah, baby! <laughs> Sucking egg, Seattle! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> did we just open with a sucking egg? You're darn right we did. Welcome in. Monday, October 26th. Apologies to... No one. Yeah. No, no, nobody. Take that 12th man. <laughs> nobody. Take that 12th man. Yes, we... Uh, you know, they have this saying, act like you've been there. We haven't been there for eight years. Uh, that was the first win at home against Seattle. Who we are in a division against since mm-hmm. twenty uh, since twenty twelve. All right, but we are kind of kind of excited, mm-hmm. and uh, man, there is so much to talk about. Right before we started the show today, I told everybody like this is I don't know how we get this in under a couple of hours. There so much happened this weekend, week seven nearly in the books. So grab some snacks, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Hour and hour and fifty minutes of Cardinal talk. <laughs> and then we'll uh, quickly get through the rest. Oh, there's so much to talk about. So many big games, big performances. Obviously, Sunday Night Football was exciting. Uh, one of the better games I've ever seen on Sunday Night Football for more reasons than just the fact the Cardinals are our hometown team. I will tell you this story, though, uh, which uh, my wife was secretly recording me during parts of this and, mm-hmm. and posted my reaction I heard this morning from a from a Cardinal fan here in the Valley. They were so upset when they saw DK Metcalf go up the sideline to score the game winning touchdown in overtime mm-hmm. that they turned the TV off, walked away upset, and went and cleaned the ki- and cleaned the kitchen. <laughs> oh no! And turned the TV back on an hour later. And noticed that Kyler Murray was smiling in the post-game interview and wondered, why are you smiling? You missed it all. So he rage cleaned the kitchen, missed the entire finish of the game. Wow. <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, what a back and forth. Football's so fun. Yeah, yeah. I did lose seven years of life, though, last night mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the heart damage that took place. But that was uh, that was fun. We have a, a Halloween episode coming up on Friday. You do not want to miss it. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. I'm laughing because I am picturing Jason in the costume he is going to wear, and it is it is spectacular football. Yeah, I think I think uh, you'll have a good time. Subscribe, click the bell. Yeah, please do. Twitter at the FF Ballers, the Fantasy is the website. <laughs> It's Monday, which mm-hmm. means we've got some puns. We've got some one-liners. We've got some reaction from the weekend. Clear your throats. Prepare your uh, most professional voice. Let's get into it. Mm. Yes, we begin today with Baker Yayfield. <laughs> How about booty pooping Cam Newton? <laughs> that is where my poop comes from. Booty pooping. <laughs> Cam nothing. Oh, no, Josh Fakeups. Yeah, that stunk. How about Jarek McKinnon? Mm, followed up by Warrick McKinnon. Seriously, Warrick <laughs> McKinnon. <laughs> Chase Naypool. Chase Claystool. Oh, oh, decoy Metcalf. Mike, you should take oh, this yes. one. Oh, yes, Antonio gets him. Oh, yeah. Weak Elliot. Mm. Ezekiel Smelliot. Oh, a classic. Uh, CD Sham. Or maybe Silence of the Lamb. Oh. That's a good one. <laughs> Dev- Devante Statums. <laughs> I like it. That's not bad. We've got Flames Robinson. Oh, yes. 
Whoa, Burrow. Whoa, Burrow. <laughs> and Noah can't. I'm oh. sorry. He can't. Uh, they have 14 tight ends in Denver. That's what I learned this weekend. The one whose name I still can't pronounce. Aguebunan. Aguebunan. Okay. I, I th- yeah, I think. That was spectacular. Mm. That was one of the Monday Pundays. That was the mm. final one. They've uh, got yes. Nick Vanette. they got Jake Butt. And then they got Noah Kant, who's also hurt again. Yeah. I mean, he limped off the field. So that's unfortunate. unfortunate. Um, but a very exciting weekend. Man, I, could, I couldn't sleep for a couple of hours after the game. I couldn't. I had to come down off of it all. Uh, how'd the Cowboys do this weekend, Brooks? How you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I missed it. Did you? Did Thanks you? for asking, though. Did you watch those with blindfolds on? I mean, <laughs> just yeah. listening. Yeah. That was rough. Um, we won. You didn't. Okay, moving on. Weekly Rewind. All right, he's back. Antonio Brown, one-year contract signed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady took it to 100 this week. Yeah, he oh, did. yes, he did. Lit it up. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, you know, I am really thankful that Mike brought this up two weeks ago, the idea of taking the touchdown-dependent Mike Evans, trying to shop him, ship him out of town. Got even worse this week with the signing of Antonio Brown, which Bruce Arians made a really big point of saying had nothing to do with Tom Brady. Tom Brady had no say in this. It was all him, even though. It was my idea. Even though <laughs> weeks ago he said uh, not a fit for Antonio Brown. So I don't know what changed. He matured is what has been said. But he's eligible to play as soon as week nine. Let's talk about how fantasy players should approach, you know, signing Antonio Brown if he's not already been picked up in your league. And then how do you feel about Godwin? How do you feel about Evans? Gronkowski, 22 targets in three weeks. Another great week from Gronkowski. Uh, So the way that I see this offense is it's all great for Brady. All of these weapons mm-hmm. are going to help him. Yeah. He he's playing great football. And when you have that brain and you have weapons across the board, like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, and Gronk finally getting back into football shape, he's going to be able to do whatever he wants. But you want to know where the ball's gonna go? To whoever's open. It, if if the defense wants to focus on Antonio Brown or uh, Mike Evans or Chris Godwin, then Tom Brady's going elsewhere. So the way that I see this offense is you're going to want to play pretty much all of those guys, but it's going to be inconsistent. You're going to have games that are good for Godwin, games that are bad for Godwin, and it's I, I think it's a shame for consistency, but in the end, I will still be playing all of those players. I'm the most confident in Godwin's weekly consistency, and everybody else I think is going to really, really fluctuate. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Week nine, when he's eligible to return, is against New Orleans. I don't know where the confidence level is going to be heading into the fantasy playoffs with playing Antonio Brown, but it will be interesting to see what happens. No question. On him specifically, do you guys expect him to be involved, be heavily targeted, and and be a major piece of this early? or No, or I do not. I, I'll say this. If you're the way you're talking about Jay is the guy who's open will be getting the ball. That's Antonio Brown. I I know it's been a it's been a while since we saw him. The last time was in that uh, the Patriots game where he goes in with no practice and Tom Brady hooks him up with about 50 yards and a touchdown on very limited snaps. I think Antonio Brown still has it. It might take him some time to get acclimated, but you he uh, it'll be interesting when we talk about waivers tomorrow where we prioritize Antonio Brown compared to some of these other players. They also have a week 13 bye week. They're one of those teams. So there will be a limited window here to figure it out. But the, oh, but, oh my goodness. the playoff matchups are outstanding. Minnes- Minnesota, Atlanta, Detroit. Holy crap. Go get Tom Brady. Yes. That, what yeah, that, that says. Yeah, it's a good point. You may uh, He may have a swan song championship this year. They They're looking like big-time favorites Mm -hmm. uh, heading into the the playoffs. All right, injury news. Mm. Odell Beckham, torn ACL, season is over. Uh, Baker, it was kind of Baker's fault on this one. Uh, You know, you never know what's going to happen, but he underthrew uh, Beckham, interception, injured trying to make the tackle, which you see too often, and then – 
Baker went absolutely hamburger in the second half. He was 17 for 18, I think, five touchdowns in the game. Uh, he said Beckham told him to go be great, and he was. Mm. I mean, so, we, he's been a far better quarterback when Beckham is not on the field. And I, I'm not saying that sure. he will be, but there's something mentally about being able to go to anyone and not feeling like you have to support um, uh, a squeaky wheel. Yeah, I mean, we had the, the video of him throwing a touchdown to – I think it might have been a Harrison Bryant touchdown. This was a couple weeks ago where he, instead of celebrating, Baker ran up to Jarvis and Beckham and was like, hey, guys, you know, you're going you're gonna to get yours. Yeah, don't, Bas basically don't worry. Basically encouraging them that he just threw a touchdown to somebody else. Uh, so I'm with you, Jay, that it's hard, to, <laughs> it's hard to project that a quarterback will be better without their superstar wide receiver, but they're – there could be a huge burden lift off, lifted off of his shoulders. Well, the important thing here, there's two two implications. One, remember the identity of this team. It's to run the football. Mm -hmm. And so predictability, I think some people will run out to get Rashad Higgins, somebody that I really like. Um, but I, I wouldn't be running out to get him because I think consistency is going to be a, a troubling thing. The one player I would try to actively acquire is Austin Hooper. He's going to potentially miss another week due to the appendectomy. He's not going to be somebody that is, uh, you know, I think people are holding on to super tightly. But with Baker's tendencies, with what Hooper was showing before the, the appendectomy surgery, I think Hooper is somebody that I would be trying to pick up for the playoff run personally. Yes, I, and I agree. But something to pay attention to with Hooper, he's going to miss this next week if you get your appendix out, and then it's the bye week. So if you're going after Austin Hooper, understand that he's going to be sitting on your bench for – multiple weeks before you can even consider playing him. In, well, in see if he gets dropped. See if yeah. he gets dropped over the next two weeks. <laughs> Kenyon Drake carted off with an ankle injury in the game last night. Mm. Uh, X-rays were negative, so no break, but he will, uh, I guess, undergo an MRI. His face said it was bad, Yeah, the injury. Yeah, and uh, so Kenyon Drake's season gets worse. Yeah, they're going into their bye week this week. We'll have information, uh, you know, before we need it as far as how long, but I still expect him to miss time even after the bye. In Chase Edmonds, if he's not rostered, which I assume he is, but if he's not, my goodness, it's going to be Spend one of all. the, the mm -hmm. top pickups because he's so involved in the passing game and he's great. He's great. Chris Carson, midfoot sprain, MRI on Monday, and the expectation as of reports this morning is that it is not a significant injury to Chris Carson, but he could still miss a week. Deontay Johnson limped off after a nice My return goodness, game, man. but he cannot stay healthy right yeah, now. Yeah, this, this dude's getting bad breaks here. And uh, I believe the report that I read said he his week eight is not in jeopardy. Not? Not in jeopardy. Okay. Uh, so not a severe uh, injury. It's an ankle, I believe, but not high ankle. So this is what I have read from beat reporters so far. We'll have more reports tomorrow if you need to get back on the Claypool train. Andy Dalton took a nasty hit. He's in the concussion yep. protocol. Uh, you know, at this point, you're looking at defenses against Dallas. I mean, yes, it, you they're, are. they're a disaster. I heard, Mike, you talk up the Washington football team's defense on the live stream Sunday morning saying, I know, I know it didn't work the yeah. week prior, but you were still in. Hopefully people uh, – did that because it worked out pretty well against them Cowboys. Another big injury with some implications here. 49ers running back Jeff Wilson suffered a high ankle sprain after scoring three times. Jeff Wilson, he couldn't be stopped. No. And uh, so well, until the injury, but yeah, yeah, McKinnon could be stopped by not giving the ball to McKinnon at all. <laughs> Which afterwards, Kyle Shanahan came out and said that was basically the plan. He's been getting a lot of uh, work and they wanted to give him rest. So, so something yeah, could I, have so told good, us yesterday. Yeah. yeah, that seems like a line. I mean, to be honest, he, he, he's he been getting a lot of rest in previous games, if you recall. He had multiple games of not getting any involvement. And Jermichael Hasty, and I'm going to throw this out there. This is who you need to look at. You need to look at Tevin Coleman. Yeah, he's on, he's yes. on waiver wires. Jeff Wilson's likely to miss some time. Mostert won't be back. Hasty is a placeholder. McKinnon, they don't want to overload. Tevin Coleman is was a long shot to return this past week. He could be back next week. Coleman could have a huge workload right upon coming back. Yes, he could. And uh, Debo was getting – Debo was a running back in this game. One of the reasons McKinnon was barely used is because they used Jeff Wilson and Debo Samuel out of the backfield over and over and over again. Now, he pulled his hamstring, 
This team is just, if you line them up in the backfield, their health meter goes down halfway before the play begins. That's the way it seems. Well, that's because their turbo is on. And when you run yeah, you the run, entire time on turbo, you, you run hot. Yeah. But seriously, the we, here's what we know. Whoever the running back is, they will be valuable for the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan's team. You got to read the tea leaves and get, you know yeah, you do. You, 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 someone call a witch right we just from, from robin hood we, can you, you can call them you don't have to go to their like little cottage in the woods look, they've updated man they, really they yeah. understand can you facetime a witch yeah I'm pretty, 2020 is the year of the witch so yeah they're, <laughs> they're up to date is it yeah that's what i've heard um it's like doctor it, on demand but a little bit different yeah, dude, right. they got bills too they got to figure things out. They got bills to pay. They got <laughs> newt eyes of newt to buy. Yeah, but if you can get, you know, if you can get the ingredients to the witch, then <laughs> finding out who the starter is for the 49ers will be really valuable. Okay, uh, that's some good advice. <laughs> also, if it's Tevin Coleman, then we know Andy is a witch. Uh, that's that's right. <laughs> Philip Lindsay concussion. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Nikhil Harry head injury. He was probably not on your roster anymore. Mm -hmm. There were some surprise inactives this past weekend uh, beyond Joe Mixon. Aaron Jones was inactive with a calf injury. He wanted to play. We're learning the lesson. The lesson for Green Bay is if they want to play, but the team doesn't want them to play, they don't show up on the field. I love it. I love it. If you're a Packers fan, you have to be saying, thank goodness that the team is not doing the thing where it's like, get out there, you wimp. Get Play through it. This is like, no, stay healthy. We want to play for a championship yeah, it, it worked for Devonte adams <laughs> right yes who was held out he wanted to Statums. play he, yeah Devonte Statums, who was held out and i believe that was the most yardage of his career so well and and the thing is is they they win the games anyway yeah i mean they they figure it out austin hooper we talked about it the appendectomy was a late inactive could miss week eight as well uh, i think we've had this happen in the past players have missed one game before they've missed two games before uh more often too Emmanuel Sanders was placed on the COVID list at the last second, and then everybody's favorite sleeper, Marquez Callaway, went absolutely <laughs> PPR monster. Yeah, he did. And uh, no, nobody knew that was going to happen. And uh, we did uh, one small note. We forgot one of the matchups on the Friday show because some people were bringing that up. We accidentally somehow one of the matchups was lost in between Thursday and Friday, and we had we didn't find it anywhere. And it, so just, it will be released in the lost episode. But what it, here's what it said. It was the Packer game, and we were going to say start Devontae Adams. That's right. And uh, sit Aaron Jones. That's 100% correct. So, I mean, there you go. We should do these afterwards. That is so much easier. <laughs> yeah, because then we would not recommend to start Darren Fells like I did. Oh. And get a nice fat gooser. Oh, my gosh. You honk, know what? Honk. Thank you. <laughs> the uh, the Darren Fells thing was so terrible for you, Mike, because sometimes you make a deft free agent move and you feel like you're the king of the world. Yep. And you on Sunday morning, you picked up Darren Fells, league of record. Hooper had been knocked out for you. Zach Ertz has been knocked out for you. You're like, man, I'm the man here. I just snuck Darren Fells onto my roster. And it came down to a actually a a hard situation or a hard dis a, uh, a dilemma of like, <laughs> <laughs> do I pick up Darren Fells, or oh. do I pick up Harrison Bryant? And uh, yeah, you went with. Uh, I I picked wrong. <laughs> you chose <laughs> poorly. poorly. Yeah, I did. All right, before we get to the stud muffins, look. If you want to choose wisely, you want to choose pristine auction for all your sports memorabilia, your entertainment memorabilia. Right now, they have a World Series auction, a special auction dedicated to. Baseball, $20 starting prices, no reserves. It lasts through Thursday. But this is the place where we get all of our swag. All the jerseys you see up, we we literally get them there. We do the bidding. We win the uh, bids. Here, Here's some stuff that just went under we, $100. By we, recently. we mean Brooks more often than not because he is competitive on there. Yeah. He wants He's our proxy. Part of our team. Yeah. And uh, we're doing a good job, Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Deontay Johnson signed jersey. Went for 65 bucks on the auction. Noah Fant signed a jersey. 55! 55 smackaroos. And if you sign up smackaroos. with I the code it. BALLERS when you make your completely free account, it's free to bid. You only spend when you actually you know, win the auction. But use that code BALLERS. You'll get $10 off. So then 
the sixty-five dollar uh, Deontay Johnson jersey will be fifty-five. <laughs> so check it out, pristine auction. <laughs> that was the witch. Do- <laughs> <laughs> it's Halloween. Oh my god! <laughs> PristineAuction.com. Use the code Ballers. Uh, the fifty-five smackaroos. That's exactly the contract for Antonio Brown. So they, they only had to pay fifty-five smackaroos to get him on the roster. So <laughs> let's uh, let's get into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Look, man, it's nice being a rookie in the NFL these days. I guess. Goodness. Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, getting it done this Oof. week. Herbs. Burrow on pace to break the passing yardage record. Big Herbs taking care of business. He, Justin Herbert has been so good. Like I, it, It's unbelievable how good he has been. I love him. I do, too. I love him. I love watching him play football. I love any team. Like, we talk about Anthony Lynn, the pluses, the minuses. This team's had some tough breaks, injuries. Anthony Lynn trusting his rookie to throw the ball down the field to Virgil Green and, you know, Jalen Guyton. And these players is so impressive to me. And it matures Herbert at a faster pace. And he's having great success, and he's a fantasy football option. He, he, yeah, he has five he's, he's games. He's not an option. He's yeah. a great option. He has five games under his belt. His 16-game pace, I think you you two know how good Justin Herbert's been. Mm-hmm. I think you'll be blown away. Here's his 16-game pace, 4,934 yards, which would, I believe, uh, Andrew Luck has the record at mm-hmm. 4,300 yards. Yes. Uh, on pace for 38 touchdowns, on pace for, uh, I believe, uh, nine interceptions. This guy has been unbelievable, and that's adding a pace of 387 rushing yards. He's just been phenomenal. Now, this isn't going to hold up. He's not going to do that for a season. He so, might not do that next week against Denver, whose defense has been uh, better than I expected. So if you have Herbert, do you look to try to trade him? I'm trying to trade for him. Really? Yeah. I I have a I he I mean look, he looks great. He has the weapons. The team is letting him go. I still have a a little bit of a hard time trusting it. Pass the bye. I'm in on Herbert. I'm I'm 100% in. The schedule for him is incredible. Uh it, we'll see how he does against Denver. He does have them in week 16. I'm not scared to play Herbert against the Denver Broncos. Uh, uh, but uh, that's really it. That's it. Maybe a game against New England. You could be a little bit worried because their defense comes and goes. But other than that, there are no scary matchups for Justin Herbert moving forward. Uh, Kyler Murray, 34 for 48, 360 and three, another 67 on the ground on pace for just about 1,000 rushing yards, 16 rushing touchdowns. Going into the bye week, it's Kyler and it's Russ at the very tippy top of the fantasy quarterback uh, list. Kyler has more points, but Russ had the bye. I think Russ is a little bit higher on points per game. But these are the two. I mean, Kyler's the only quarterback with a you know top 10 performance every single week. Right. I mean, it's been unbelievable running the football consistently and the difference that DeAndre Hopkins makes to this offense having a trusted target. It's been impressive. If you haven't seen the clip of Kyler Murray, so there, DeAndre Hopkins had a monster touchdown, uh, like was a 70, I don't know, whatever, a, a huge touchdown. But they, When, this past week? Yeah, this past week. Oh, the, the Hopkins touchdown was like 30 yards or something. Oh, it was only 30? Yeah. Okay, yeah. but anyway, so they go, uh, they had a great camera shot of Kyler's face. Oh, yeah. And Kyler, is the, he's scanning around. He sees Hopkins in single coverage, and he actually smiles. and Like, but, like an involuntary yes. smile. Like, it just made him so happy. Like a giggle. Like, yeah. oh, wow. Uh, here we go. It's uh, It was like seeing that in, in real time is unbelievable. That whole play was broken, too. That play, the ball was snapped with his uh, – he wasn't even looking at the center. Nobody moved on the offensive line. He turns to the left, throws without the laces, and just drops it in the bucket. I didn't know if that was on purpose or not. Like, was that the no. design? No, 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 no. They were all looking to the sideline, and it just got screwed up, but uh, delightful. Uh, Tom Brady was unbelievable. What I what you liked seeing from Tom Brady, and we said it might take a little bit of time to acclimate, is he's taking the throw that's there. If it's Scotty Miller, cool. Godwin, yep, 
Evans, I'm not going to throw you the ball until six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Don't care. Gronk, sure. He's just taking what's there, which is how he's always had success. It's how he's put up prolific numbers in the past. And then, uh, you know, took it to about 1,000 this mm -hmm. week. Joe Burrow, like I said, he's on pace for 4,600 yards. That'll break the record. And he, he can do it because he's been there since day one. Russell Wilson, another monster week. Uh, Kyle the Borgogan pointed out a weird stat quirk about Russell Wilson. He's actually been bad on third down. Shocking. 44% completion rate, which is 31st on third down, 31st passer rating, 30th on yards per completion because they pretty much just don't have third they, downs. Well, they've it's a small sample size. They've had 12 third downs this season. <laughs> uh, they just get first downs every That's first down. That's made up, right? That is made okay. up, of All course. Right. Uh, Baker, five touchdowns. And then a bounce back week from Aaron Rodgers because Devontae Adams has nine to ten yards of separation on every route, no matter where he is on the field. So impressive. Big running back weeks. Jeff Wilson, James Robinson. Nice to see from Robinson, right? After he's had a couple of ho hum weeks, the team has struggled. Are you, you know, buy, sell, hold? What are you looking at with James Robinson? I, I'm not buying him after this week. But I'm certainly holding him. I think it's. I think he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. I think the the workload is going to be there for him. And uh, yeah, so I I would be willing. I guess I would be willing to buy if you can buy cheap because of the buy. Uh, if you know someone who's buy on the buy, you mm. buy the buy um, down on the buy you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, usually I don't want to, you know, go and pay up for a guy who drops thirty fantasy points and. Uh, is going to cost you a lot, but if the manager is struggling with uh, bye week issues and and needs to make a move, and you can do it at a good value, and you've got the time, I, I believe. My point is, I believe in James Robinson for the rest of the season. Yeah, he put my dynasty team on his back this week, won me a week because of the big game. I will let people know, Chris Thompson went on the COVID IR, mm -hmm. uh, but you do have the bye week here, so we'll see if he's back. Jeff Wilson, the kind of monster game before maybe going on IR. We don't know. We don't know how bad this injury is. Tevin, they're clearing the way for Tevin Coleman. Yep. Yep. It was so it was so weird because all of the morning games and NFL stopped doing this stupid scheduling thing where you have 100 games in the morning and then a few in the afternoon. Like, split them up. Mm -hmm. But all the morning games were done. And then here comes the few afternoon games, and before halftime, the number one and number two running backs on the week were Jeff Wilson and, and James Robinson. They were <laughs> on fire. That's crazy. Todd Gurley, Jason, start of the week. Two touchdowns. One he didn't mean <laughs> One to reluctant score. touchdown, yeah. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that, that was um, – Thanks, Todd. I really thought about that play because before the play happened, you had both coaches know what was going to happen. You had Matt Patricia wanting them to let him score. And then uh, if you listen to the Falcons coaching staff, they talked about the fact that they knew that they were going to let them score, and so don't score. Someone should have told Todd Gurley. I wonder, is it legal to pick Todd Gurley up and walk him into the end zone? Uh, is that allowed? <laughs> yeah. As the defense? As yeah. the defense. <laughs> Can you just Can you tackle do him that? forward? Oh, no. Tackle him forward. You could do that, right? I think you can. Now, you're not allowed Pick to. Pick him up, throw him over your shoulder, <laughs> one of those linemen, and walk him in. You can't do that. I think there is a penalty for, for like, carrying a player, but I, you can certainly keep him up. Right. You know what I mean? Like, sandwich him, and, and here we go. <laughs> yeah, when it turns into the big scrum and the pile is just moving. Exactly. And you're like, oh, Todd Gurley, you're so strong. You're so <laughs> strong. It's just and, him pushing five guys. And, Fuckland, if you don't know what happened in this game, maybe you are not up to speed. It was the craziest thing. Todd Gurley, he, he was aware. He tried to not get in the end zone, but the ball broke the plane on, on accident. He's trying to fall down. And that situation – because they were about to kick a field goal, run the clock out, game would have been over, and the Falcons would have won. And instead, the Lions got the ball again with time on the clock because of the touchdown and came down and had a last-second touchdown to win the game. It was insane. If this is your plan, why not just take a knee? They needed the first down, I think. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, I was, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy, and he snuck in. Good for fantasy players. Mm -hmm. Bad for the Falcons. Second week in a row where like a late game coaching maneuver paid off for, you know, Mike Vrabel last week, the 12th man uh, penalty. Mm -hmm. And then this week, Matt Patricia, give his guy some time. And 
Kenny Galladay catches everything that's within a radius of, of 50 feet. Jamal Williams filling in for Aaron Jones was great. 19 for 77 and a touchdown. I expect that we'll have Aaron Jones back next week against Minnesota. It's worth I expect out. to have Dalvin Cook back next week against Green Bay. Yeah, I, th I think you're right with both of those. It, it is worth pointing out for a possible future uh, Aaron Jones injury that A.J. Dillon was not really involved. Five carries, 11 yards. It, this was the Jamal Williams show. All right, I want some advice here, guys, because it's been a real rocky situation for Antonio Gibson. It was a good week for Gibson, a great week. 20 for 128 and a touchdown. Now, he was outsnapped by J.D. McKissick by one snap, 34 to 33. We saw Peyton and Barber, Barber on, the, on field. the field. Yeah. And we, we know that there is – you cannot take what happens against Dallas and appropriate it to the season. He's got the bye week, but then the Giants, then Detroit, then Cincinnati. So what do you do with Gibson? Do you hold him through the bye? Do you look to shop him for a – like if you could go out there and package Gibson and a player to pick up uh, Jonathan Taylor, do you do it? You know, coming yeah. off the bye. Yeah, I would do that just because of the bye week. You're you're already gaining two games by trading a bye week for someone past their bye. That's a clever little trick to try to do in your leagues. Um, but I, I I think Gibson is the real deal, and he he has been disappointing. Um, you know, in in half of his weeks and really good in half of his weeks. But his disappointing games, they aren't crushing you you know he's right he's rb not, 25 exact, 28 29 yeah and those are disappointing you're sure. not happy with rb 28 but he's not crushing you and causing a goose to give you a loss so i i, I think those, that you're those fine. geese bringing you the loss <laughs> very distracting yeah when they fly in they're like yeah. taking a they, they're ah, mean yeah ah, they're mean creatures ah, they drop the ah. loss from above <laughs> yeah you don't want to get uh that's why they wear the visors to protect. Oh, from oh, from the droppings. Oh, I thought you were saying there was a dropping. I was situation. Yeah, yeah, I was. Who's wearing the visors? Yeah, <laughs> the, that's the the players. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, the, you we see both the thought geese, you said the geese were wearing the visors. No. That's what I thought you were saying. I was like, I don't know this commercial where geese are wearing visors. No, uh, not, we're not like a John Gruden <laughs> visor, like a like a plastic visor for the the players from the. The poop, Jason. That was the the poop. most disheveled joke we've ever <laughs> encountered. It's not the most disheveled. We've we've once a show. All right, wide receiver studs. Oh, Hard locking. Oh my. Ooh, oh baby. my. Oh baby. Now Tyler Lockett had a mediocre game, fifteen for two hundred and three. Oh <laughs> yeah, which is not his only three touchdown game of the season. It's worth uh, the occasional expected. Happens to everyone, down game from Tyler Lockett to enjoy the bounty that is 20 targets. 20 targets. I mean, this wasn't, this was Patrick Peterson lined up on decoy Metcalf. And uh, every time Drake or Patrick lined up on anybody, they threw him the ball. So most of the time it was Tyler Lockett. It, you know, Russ had this game that was better throws than you've seen from anybody ever. And then, you know, some mistakes. But this is incredible. Here we are about halfway through the season. Tyler Lockett is the wide receiver one. Well, that that's is not expected. That is including yeah. a bye week in there. That's on total points. So he's been on fire because Russ has been on fire. Yeah, cooking. Devontae Adams uh, somehow overshadowed his 13 for 196 mm -hmm. and two. Always open permanently. It didn't hurt that there was no Aaron Jones. They could lean a little bit more on him, but they can do it anytime they want to. Minnesota, San Francisco, Jacksonville coming up. Rest of the season, Hopkins or Adams? Adams. Adams. Hopkins has a bye coming up, and even without that, I'd rather have Adams. Deontay Johnson, 15 targets. He had 9 for 80, two scores for Deontay. He did leave again, unfortunately, with the injury, but this is what we were talking about. As much as I love Chase Claypool uh, and the potential for the rookie for Mapletron, Deontay's the number one guy in this offense when he's on the field. He came back. Lo and behold, he's the number one guy in the offense. So just prepare for that. If, if Deontay is there this week, then you have to temper your expectations for Claypool. I, I, I don't expect Claypool to be as <laughs> as bad as he was because I think he had, we have negative points. He did indeed. His one target, like, he fumbled. Like they're, They will look at that and say, we need to get Claypool more touches. Yeah, uh, they won the game, and they're undefeated. Deontay Johnson, big game. A.J. Brown, D.J. Moore, if you 
have initials. Uh, it was a good week. I guess. Six for 153 and one for Brown. It, uh, he's one big play every single game. It doesn't matter the opponent. He's been great. It's it's nice to have a player like that because at one point in the game, this is half. I think we're near halftime. He's got zero points. He's done nothing. He's on my lineup, and I'm like, oh come on. I know the Steelers are good, but oh, I just got a notification: 75 yard touchdown. Let's go! Yes. DJ Moore, another big game because you know he scored. He had another big, huge 70 something yard touchdown. Just four catches, but you can get this any week from DJ Moore, and he's yeah. been he's been all right. Uh, he. Somehow has had 93 yards exactly in three straight games. That That's is, not true. It That's is, impossible. It's true, man. It, and, well, it makes uh, it easy to project next week. And twice it was on five targets for four receptions. <laughs> Tyler Boyd, another good game for him. 13 targets, 11 catches, 101 and one. Uh, I will throw out there, A.J. Green, for a second consecutive game, had yep. a nice fantasy day, and his, his target share the last two weeks, 27%, 28% for A.J. Green. So, you know, and didn't T Higgins yeah. get a little, T he Higgins had a touchdown. Get, no, he a, got, well, he had a good game. I thought T Higgins got, he did get a hurt. little shook in this game. He did. He did. So it could be very interesting moving forward. Uh, Scotty Miller, because he was on of your course. bench. Six could, no, because he's on the wire. Yeah. Scotty. You yeah. Well, let somebody else, chase, let somebody else yeah. chase that. Don't pick him up. Godwin. Nice game. Terry McLaurin. Start of the week. 11 targets, seven catches, 90 and a touchdown. He's great. He's, he's great. Very player. good. By week coming up. Hopkins, 12 targets, 10 catches, 103 and one. He's been great every single week. And uh, he's leading the way he in is, terms of receptions. Yep. He's the wide receiver two on the season to this point. Uh, and that is, uh, let me ask you a legit question here, Jason, because, and I know you have a vested interest in one of these players, but based on how they score their points, Hopkins or Lockett, yeah, who would you rather have? It would definitely be Hopkins. The The consistency is is worth uh, having Hopkins, but it's nice that Lockett can even be in that conversation. Harrison Bryant at the tight end position, four for 56 and yeah. two. Rookie tight end for the Cleveland Browns. He stepped in in replacement of Austin Hooper. Uh, when Hooper is back, he will be the main guy, but you might have another week of Harrison Bryant. Gronkowski, third consecutive week mm -hmm. of being heavily targeted. Eight targets, five for 62 and a touchdown. And the interesting thing, I will say this, whether it's A.J. Green or Rob Gronkowski, these are players that hadn't played for a really, really long time. And we're only talking about week seven of the NFL season. Mm -hmm. Gronk started getting more involved two weeks ago. There were injuries, obviously, to O.J. Howard. But Gronkowski is a viable tight end option because you know, what do you lean on? Touchdown probability, mm -hmm. it's there for Gronk. Familiarity with the quarterback, that connection, that's there. Good offense. Yeah. And above all, targets. He has 22 targets in the last three games. OJ, you know, this happened when OJ Howard went out. So it's not just some random coincidence. There's a lot of things here that says Gronk is someone who is locked in as a, as a tight end one now that we're at this point in the season. And then TJ Hawkinson. Start of the week, six targets, five catches, 59 and a touchdown. Last second touchdown. Yeah, last second touchdown. Um, honestly, that last drive meant a lot for Matthew Stafford, who was uh, disappointing. Again, Kenny Galladay added a bunch of yards on that drive. And then Hawkinson, look, Atlanta, by hook or by crook, they hook up your tight end with a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even when the game is over, they're like, no, we'll one more. give you one more drive. <laughs> Try again. And then you do have uh, – you do have a nice performance from. Oh, baby! Not that you weren't expecting it, but uh, nice to see him get into the end zone. Darren Waller, nine targets, six for 50, and a touchdown. There's a lot of good to talk about, but uh, it's a little bit of bad. Well, before we move to that, real quick, just want to circle because tight ends are a situation. Yeah. Logan Thomas has had. Two good games now with Kyle Allen as the full-time starting quarterback. And Logan Thomas was one of those guys at the beginning of the season. All the numbers were there. Like, he's running routes. He's getting targets. Dwayne Haskins is just not connecting with him. Are we improving in confidence on Logan Thomas? He's going into his bye week, but then he gets the Giants as soon as he's back. You, you might look at him uh, later, but, you know, he's... he's <laughs> Next Tuesday. He's getting four targets a game which is, you know, he's he's had a touchdown in back-to-back -back games with Kyle Allen, but uh, I, I don't think, I mean, the last four games, four targets in each one of them, 
going into a buy, I think it's someone maybe we'll put on the waiver show next week. Yeah, if you're going week to week, let's say you get one more Harrison Bryant week and then you want to make a pivot after that with Hooper coming back next Tuesday's waivers, maybe Logan Thomas shows up. Yeah, I wouldn't hold him through the buy is my point. Okay. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. All right, we have to have a conversation Oof, about man. Cam nothing because, mm. I mean, mm. it doesn't get much worse than what your eyeballs and the stat line said. Nine for 15, 98 yards, three interceptions, pulled from the game. 19 rushing yards. Yeah, yeah but I, this was a disaster. And, and the throwing motion, the, just watching him try to, to – you know, he doesn't have great weapons, but this isn't all, you know, a hobbled Edelman out there or a hurt Nikhil Harry. This is a quarterback that is not throwing the ball well. And Bill Belichick came out and said that Cam Newton is absolutely the team starter and that they wanted to get Jared Stidham some experience. I believe that. Yeah, as do I. I believe that Bill doesn't look at this. He is looking to win the division still. He is looking to find a way to compete. And he knows that the, the only way he's going to get from here to a title is if Cam Newton regains form. He's not going to get there with Jared Stidham. But I don't think he's going to get there with Cam Newton either. And I'm not sure your fantasy team does with the wide range of outcomes. Cam's going to have some more good games. But what do fantasy players do? Because this week stung. It hurt. It cost them sure. wins. It, it was tough. I mean, we – at least I, I had talked about I was pivoting off of Cam Newton. I – grabbed Matt Ryan off the waiver wire because I didn't want to play Cam in this matchup. Buffalo, the Jets, the next two games. So that, that'll be really important for Cam Newton. You may be shell-shocked and don't want to play him against Buffalo. I totally understand that. Uh, but Jason is – I think Jason is correct. The the five for 19 on the ground, that's the shocking stat where he, he had run no fewer than nine times. And that was a couple weeks ago. On, he ran nine for 27. Cam Newton gets his fantasy points by running, and that we just we know that that that's why you draft him because he has the cheat code of running. He has the cheat code of being the goal line running back, and if he's not going to do that, it's going to be a disaster. Yeah, my confidence is it's, is it's shook. It's not there. It's shook for sure. And the fact is, is he could he can get pulled again. That's another variable that came into play. Gardner Minshew. There was a, a report that came out early Sunday, late mm -hmm. Saturday. Look, the, he's on kind of the tightrope here. They could pull him for Mike Glennon, which is not something you want to put on your resume. No. Uh, this is a, no. And so when you have a possibility of something like that happening and you have 32 teams with quarterbacks, you kind of just find a better option someplace else. Yeah, usually that's, that's the best approach is to just not take the risk of the enormously bad benched game. Are you dropping him? talking about cam or cam. gardner no cam newton I, I think cam is a streamer and so if i don't like the matchup and i like someone else better I, i'd be willing to drop him i don't see him as someone you have to have to roster as a multiple quarterback obviously every league is different right some home leagues teams are rostering three quarterbacks and there's no one on the waiver wire in which case you might need to hold on to him but in all the leagues we play in i would happily drop him yeah it's going to be an interesting game next week because if Buffalo can, who hasn't looked great the last couple of weeks, if they can take care of New England at home next week, that's a two and five New England team and a five and two Buffalo team, and really changes and defines the uh, that division. Jimmy G, nothing special. You kind of gotta, you know, if Debo's hurt, you know, I don't think you're counting on Jimmy G. So no, no, we we not. knew going into this week it, it was a bad matchup for him. And then Patrick Mahomes, kind of a, a bunch of stuff came together in this one. He did manage to score a touchdown at the very end or throw a touchdown at the very end of the game. Got to uh, keep that streak alive. Two defensive special team scores mixed with some snow uh, and mixed with being pulled because you were you, this game was out of control. Chad Henney came in and finished it. There's really nothing to see here. You just move forward. And uh, you move forward against the Jets next week who – are 20.5 point underdogs. <laughs> That's, what do you really take in that game? Because that is old school Patriots lines. The the Randy Moss. I'm taking the I'm ta I'm taking the point minus the points. I'm taking the Chiefs minus the points. Yeah. Yeah, because wow. how many points are the Jets going to score? 10 or less. Let's give them 10. How many points are the Chiefs going to score? 30 or more. So, yeah. I it's it's incredible. 
It's incredible. All right, uh, running backs. All right, you tell me if you're worried, okay? Yeah. Tell me if you're worried. Ezekiel Elliott, second straight game with Andy Dalton, second straight smelly it performance. Hasn't looked great. You're seeing more number 20 back there. Tony Pollard taking snaps away. Yes, you are. Two Six, targets this game. 66% of the snaps against Washington, 61% of the snaps against Arizona compared to ne being averaging uh, about 80-plus percent of the snaps. Brooks, uh, our resident cowboy expert, uh, he wants me to hit this. Oh, Brooks really? is panicking. He's going full panic alarm. Brooks, you're not feeling good, are you? No, no way. The offense is terrible right now. Now, yeah, it's, and they could have a rookie behind center next week. A seventh round rookie. Um, so here, here's the thing: the, the offensive line is in shambles right now, but I assume they're going to get Zach Martin back, and that will change quite a lot. I mean, I will say this: I'm concerned for Zeke. I don't see him as, you know, a top three guy going forward, but he's still phenomenal, the centerpiece of the offense. And if the offensive line gets healthier, you're not. I mean, what are you looking to do? Are you are you trying to trade on the name value if you have them and try to capitalize? Here's, here's what I will say. Here are the next three weeks for Ezekiel Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys. Ooh, Philadelphia. You want to play Zeke against Sunday Night Football next against week. Philadelphia with that rookie or whoever's the quarterback? Okay, Danucci. Uh, yeah, in two weeks, maybe you get Andy Dalton back. Uh, hooray, the party's on. <laughs> and then that matchup will be against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then it will be a bye week. Uh, until you f you you have to wait until week eleven till you finally get the Minnesota Vikings. Find a team. Find a team that needs a win, perceptively needs players that has a bye week running back this upcoming week, and target them. Sit a week out with Zeke. Go trade for somebody that's on buy. That might be the way that you cash in on the name value for somebody that's good. Yeah, and, and when you look at the playoff weeks, you know thirteen through sixteen, you've got a Baltimore, a Niners, and an Eagles game. So let, let's, let's week eight bye weeks: Cardinals, Ravens, Broncos, Steelers. Oh, that's not true. The Steelers already had their bye, right? Yeah, they, they had their. So weird they moved that around. around. Uh, Washington. Let's Houston. figure out how far down Zeke has fallen for you. Would you trade Zeke right now for Todd Gurley? No. No, I would. I would much rather have Zeke than Todd. Gurley. I would probably hold on to Zeke there too. Okay, so then you this game fell apart, and there were no targets. For David Johnson, then either correct? No. Any chance? Uh, what about Clyde edwards alaire That Wait, one's really no, interesting. No, not based on the snap count change that happened this past week. What about the current running back 19? LaMichael P. Ryan, baby! Woo! Woo! Can we turn off we, his mic? How do we not let Mike do a little naked streaking party for oh, LaMichael P. Ryan? It happened last night. Not I mean, safe for work. I mean, I don't understand how it happened, but it did. Oh, yeah. I understand how it happened. Brooks has been telling us he's <laughs> completely snake bitten in this certain league where he's every single week people are picking up guys off the waivers and throwing them against them and they go off. And it, he got he got pirined on. So <laughs> it was a bad week for Brooks. I told you before the, the week it was coming. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just concerned. And Mike, you make a good point. He's going to be heavily involved in this offense, but can the offense move the ball? You don't want a running back that is going three and out every two seconds and they n are never winning a game so they can't commit to the run. It's just not a good situation. You probably have to hold him. I mean, the likelihood is you're not going to, if you're not going to trade him for Gurley. You're not going to trade him for David Johnson. No, the, if, if you are maybe a package deal, are you willing to yes, go reverse pack, I, uh, reverse package? I, I think the whole reverse package. I think <laughs> what we're talking about, if you're wanting to trade him because Zeke carries a humongous name, the average person is going to say, I am trading for an absolute stud. He's got down weeks, but I'm trading for him. So if you can take Zeke and take another wide receiver from your team or whatever, and, and turn him into a Dalvin Cook or a Derrick Henry or what about Aaron a Josh Jones. Jacobs? That, Cause Jacobs had a bad week. Jacobs had. Uh, 10 for 17 in this game against Tampa, who we know is a great defense, but this was much worse than we hoped. Zeke yeah. for Jacobs. Yeah. I'd, I mean, I'd rather have Jacobs, I think. I'm gonna Jacobs was the gonna running back six I'm gonna before this week. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Zeke. Well, I mean, if you're going to say that, I mean, right now, Zeke is still the running back three, uh, including this week. So, 
I'm, well, I'm but, sorry, are you saying that somehow Josh Jacobs' situation mirrors Zeke's? No, no, but I'm I'm saying that Zeke is he is still a freak of nature who is the centerpiece of that Zeke offense. Of and nice. there was a missing all world offensive lineman. Yeah, the offensive line for is, the last two weeks is in shambles. Let's see if it can get healthy. And another hard part about Zeke is he is he's a liability in the passing game right now. Like Tony Pollard is better for the Dallas Cowboys when it comes to passing downs, and I think they're recognizing that. Uh, last name, it's a I'll real throw. Ezekiel Drake situation. Yes, that is correct. Last name I'll throw out here. Melvin Gordon. Would you trade Zeke for Melvin Gordon? I can't see that. No. All right. It's tough, though, because let, let's just say what it is. In a redraft league, you're not holding these guys through. So if Zeke has got three weeks of not giving you value right now, it's just tough. Yeah, it's it, hard to it's let go. Tough. Sometimes the most courageous thing to do is to let go of the big name yep, it, it, and it would move be, forward. It's a, a bold move to trade him right now. I think it might be the right thing well, to do. Well, and that, that's why I think you would, I would try to package trade him for one of those other big names, for an Aaron Jones, for uh, you know a, a Dalvin Cook, two guys that have struggled with injuries, missed games. Maybe their managers are like, ah, yeah, I don't want to deal Maybe. with that. I, it, you're better off some, shooting for someone like Jonathan Taylor. The Witch's spell wore off for Mike Davis. Seven for 12, uh, five targets, five catches for just 24 yards, no touchdowns. Uh, this was the spirit of Christian McCaffrey that had been cast into Mike Davis, and now it's wearing off with McCaffrey potentially coming back. Nice thing is, you'll know on Thursday, if McCaffrey's not back, you play Mike Davis again. Oh, it's, yes, it's Atlanta. You do. McCaffrey's back, it could be a very spectacular primetime debut or return. Mm -hmm. Jarek McKinnon was a disaster. Three for negative one, no targets. Was was not really on the field. I mean, even no. his snaps were... He was asked. resting. Yes. Resting. He had 18% of the offensive snaps. No. No good. Lev Bell at Denver. I mean, he's not a stinker because he's just finding his way in there. Yeah. I mean, this was... A, no one's playing him in week one. They didn't even know if he was going to play. But I'll tell you this, the snap counts, the, the running back share went tremendously down for Clyde edwards helaire in this game. Now, he scored, but and something, dropped another touchdown. it's something to monitor. And I guess the question fantasy owners want to know is, like, he had another great game. Clyde's obviously very good, and he will lead this backfield. Mm -hmm. But now's the time, if you, don't believe, if you believe it's going to keep changing, if you believe Lev looked okay, if you believe that – He's going to get more work against the Jets. Wouldn't now be the time to cash in on Clyde? Yeah, I mean, you, you to speak to the snap percentages, 69% of snaps, 73% of snaps, 60, 67% of snaps. Those are his last four weeks, and then it was 53%. Now, I don't, I don't remember. Well, the, the rushing percentage went from like, you know, 87, 88% of carries to, to 43% in this game, which is the more important number to me. Yeah. Again, just a weird game. Devin single carry? You. <laughs> No, it's unfortunate, man, that the Buffalo backfield, you can't you they can't, can't run the football. And you can't confidently play either one. It's hurting Josh Allen tremendously that sure. they can't run the football. There's no play action game, which means no deep passes. They need Zach Moss or Singletary to just step up quickly. Justin Jackson. This one sucked, man. You know, Jackson uh with the injury, it just started trending the wrong way. Yeah, it especially all the way through uh Sunday afternoon. When one of the beat reporters who covers the team is like, I'm watching the warm up and I am not seeing Justin Jackson out here. He must have been in the back getting more treatment. He played. He actually was not. It wasn't terrible for PPR leagues with five for forty three, but it it you know was a, not what you expected against Jacksonville. Correct. They had the weirdest game plan where they had everybody taking a handoff. It was like who who is their running back? Um, they had seven different players with a carry. What? Yeah. Wow. It was just like, and you get a carry, That's and you crazy. get a carry. All right, wide receivers that struggled. Oh, by the way, James White, zero carries, one target. Uh, woof. Yeah. Probably entering the cannot count on category if he's not already there. DK Metcalf, he got the PPP treatment. Why did I add an extra P there? For our Peter Piper pizza. Okay. No, that's it's the, the pizza people pay. It's the payroll yeah. protection program. <laughs> uh, there was an extra 
uh, Patrick Peterson on the field stopping DK. Uh, on, honestly, and I, 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 I said this when the play happened. I know they're running and they're playing, you know, the full games all the time. But you don't do what he did on that interception play usually, which is he ran a hundred yard sprint with every oh, DK Metcalf. Yes, Unbelievable. DK yes. Metcalf with every ounce of strength he had in his body. And I felt like when that happened, I was like, I don't know how this dude is going to recover and play well the rest of the game. And he looked a little labored. So, I I, I mean, I, I think that play. But that play showed, I mean, what? Yeah. What? If, you don't, if you haven't seen his uh, rundown of Buda Baker and stopping that pick six, I mean, he was a hero for Seattle until they lost, and then it didn't matter. Because yeah. remember how for not. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, just – Taking a very unbiased look at the game, you know, that play didn't matter at all. Oh, unbiased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to. <laughs> oh, we got shut down. Who shot me down? I think you double tapped that bad oh, boy. Oh, no. You shut yourself down. Yeah. Look we're in so, the mirror. We're so unbiased. Yeah. I knew I shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're back, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Man, that was so much fun. Oh. <sighs> That was uh, great. All right. Uh, Metcalf, though, not worried about him. This was just no. a game where, uh, look, 200 yards for Tyler Lockett. That was the player you could target, and uh, they did. They just didn't target Metcalf very much. Mm -hmm. DJ Chark, this is um, – No idea what's going on here with He DJ had some Chark. nasty drops. He, he did, and it's not that the volume is not there. 14 targets two weeks ago, seven this week. Seven it, targets brought in one catch. Yeah, Gardner was bad. 14 for 27 for 173. Well, when you're throwing DJ Chark the ball seven times and he's only catching it once, I mean, I, chicken I, or the egg here, and they're both the egg. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with DJ Chark. Something's not right. Um, Stephon Diggs, eleven targets, six for forty-eight, playing uninspired football by my eyeballs the last two weeks. Not engaged on every play, every route. I don't know what exactly is happening. I don't know if he's like touchdown starved. You know how wide receivers get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, f I feel like that offense really needs a healthy John Brown. It, it, it opens things up, and uh, hopefully he's back soon. Claypool, we talked about it. Evans, two for 37. That's the rest of the season for Evans is a, a problem. Lamb and Gallup, I mean, you're not going to be able to count on these Cowboy wide receivers. We said that no. last week. The only one that you can kind of look to is the target leader, which is uh, pretty much – you know, Amari Cooper and nobody else. Do you drop C.D. Lamb? Oof. I am more than willing to drop C.D. Lamb. Yeah. yeah, if there if there's an important pickup on the waiver wire, someone you need to start. Because right now, you can't with confidence start C.D. Lamb. Now, right. it could have worked out. He had an end zone target that was pretty close. It was broken up in the end zone. He catches that ball. We're like, okay, C.D. Lamb's still good. And obviously, the talent is there. But he's someone that you can't. You can't go through the process and say, I should start C.D. Lamb with how bad the Cowboys are playing and with their quarterback situation. No, not at all. I'd much rather have somebody that is higher up the target uh, realm, like Tim Patrick or something, than I would C.D. Lamb if he's out there. Mike Williams, huge disappointment. Yes. In a game where Herbert had 347 yards and three touchdowns, Mike Williams, I was expecting so much from him, and he caught one pass for four yards. How does that happen? I don't understand it. I mean – I I can't even remember the name of the Are guy. Are we sure he didn't go for 202? <laughs> Brooks, <laughs> any chance that this is wrong and he actually had a monster game? I'll double check. I'll let oh, you know. Okay. All, right. All right, tight ends. Are you worried about any of these stinks? Uh, Kelsey Kittle? No, nope. no. Johnny Smith, just one catch for nine yards after the return. I'm just not disappointing. Uh, yeah, I mean, again. They're the tight ends. They're not all going to have good games. He's got Cincinnati coming up. I'm I'm not worried. Hunter Henry. Seven Hunter. targets. Yeah, three he's, for twenty. He's just a. I'm a. I've watched him a lot this year. He is not. He's not the athletic tight end. He's a. He's a. We'll catch it and fall down tight end. That's what he is at this point. So if it's not a touchdown, you're not getting it from Hunter. Okay. Not riding that dragon. No, and the Noah Fant. I mean, I, I. I have concerns about Noah Fant moving forward. I had him before the week, but uh, seven targets, three for thirty-eight, banged up again. Lots of tight ends involved there. You saw catches from uh, Ab Abuegonon? Close. Aguaybanon. Aguaybanon. I, I think. So, well, gotta, I'm going to go with that. That, that being said, correct. tight ends, it's a tough position. Yeah. So 
you can you can lean on the seven targets and probably play Noah Fant moving forward and just cross your fingers and hope to get something out the of it. The nice thing with him is his athleticism. When you get seven targets to a guy that is that athletic, he can always break a big play. And this was a this was, was a, our first snow game of the year. It the was, game was crazy. Uh, you look just look across the aisle. Travis Kelsey had a bad game and no one's benching Travis Kelsey. So I get that there you can have concerns about Noah Fant because of his health uh moving forward, but Noah Fant is still a guy I would want on my team. Okay. Yeah, Noah Fant, uh he had the first two weeks which were were outstanding. Third tight end, eighth tight end, and then nineteenth twenty, missed a week from injury in twenty. Uh Darren Fells, the goose, Robert mm -hmm. Tunyon, two for thirty two. Tunyon time might have run out. I think so. And then Dalton Schultz just two for twenty two. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, farewell. Stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Darn right. Don't get have those stinky feet. Mm -mm. Stanky feet. No. Stinky stanky feet. Not for the foot clan. I'll tell you That's what. That's right. You know who's got the worst? It's the kids, man. Oh the man. Stank feet. That kid. Yes. I don't know what they do. They don't wear socks. Yeah, that's part of it. All right, that'll do it for us. They don't wear socks. Waiver Wire show tomorrow. Looking uh, forward to it. Man. Enjoy the game tonight, everybody. Go Cardinals. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. In Foot Clan, before we say goodbye, we have a special message from NHTSA. A special reminder, if you're stopped at a railway crossing, the signals are flashing, do not try to sneak across. Even if the engineer sees you, applies the emergency brakes, it can take a train over a mile to stop. And we looked this up. This happens way too much nationwide, and uh, it's just not worth it. Not worth a chance. So remember, stop. Trains can't.